Phase 2. Concrete. Document 4. The following is an interview between Dr. Robert Montauk and POI 3172. Date. April 14th, 2018. Interviewer. Dr. Robert Montauk. Interviewee. POI 3172. Location. Site 713 Interview Room 2. Begin log. POI 3172. Hello again, Robert. Dr. Montauk. Hello, Depeche. I looked up your laws. I am afraid I am none the wiser. POI 3172. You'll get there. What did you find? Dr. Montauk. The law of blood is referenced a few times in quite a few places, but I couldn't find any concrete information. POI 3172. I was worried you wouldn't. Dr. Montauk. There was only one source of real use. A description of something called the Battle of the Gemaleth, written by a defector from the children. POI 3172. Ah, Hurst. Yes, I read his memoir once. The only genuine eyewitness of the king's sealing, although a rather unreliable one. Dr. Montauk. How on earth? POI 3172. Oh, he embellished. He didn't leave straight away. I stumbled upon some early draft in his things shortly before he left. I was young back then, and I remember how passionately he argued after his vision. Said we'd got the king all wrong, that he wasn't a demon or a monarch, but that he was a voice on the wind. When I was older, and figured it all out, I was surprised how close he got to a fuller understanding. He just wasn't... quite there. Dr. Montauk. I should have guessed he was a liar. POI 3172. He's not a liar, exactly. Just a little lost. And you only have my word for it, Doctor. Which the Foundation has made abundantly clear it doesn't trust. Dr. Montauk. There's no reason to doubt you. What do you have to lose? You seem as eager for me to learn the truth as I am. POI 3172. True? And on that note, I have a question, if I may. Dr. Montauk. Shoot. The longer I keep you talking, the greater the chance you'll slip up and tell me something you shouldn't. POI 3172. Do you know why the Procedure 110 Montauk actually works? There is a pause of several seconds. Dr. Montauk. Sorry, Depeche. I can't talk to you about that. POI 3172. It's okay. I think I know the answer anyway. Tell me, did you lose someone? Dr. Montauk. I don't know what you mean. POI 3172. I'm sorry to bring back painful memories, but I have looked at the Foundation archives too, you know. It was necessary back in the day to check up on what your lot were doing to his daughters. I know that your brother, Dr. Montauk, stop talking. This interview is not about my private affairs. POI 3172. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't mean Dr. Montauk. Please state for me the meaning of this law of blood. POI 3172. Isn't it obvious? It is the way the Scarlet King ruled. There was order, but it was through the imposition of an iron will on the peasantry, through armies of slaves, through nobility bred to be cruel, the realities of the world of his day in his corner of the globe. Dr. Montauk. What does this have to do with the sc with SCP-001's nature? What are these other laws? POI 3172. I suggest you look into the second- Dr. Montauk. I don't have time to play your games. Tell me now, POI 3172, or you will be escorted to solitary. POI 3172. Oh, Dr. Montauk. I am sorry. You must look for the law of concrete. That is all. Dr. Montauk. This interview is terminated. End log. Document 5. The following is a page from the 1891 report of Agent de Beauvoir on lost Foundation archives following the 1889 snarling coup. The report was lost shortly after de Beauvoir's termination in 1895, along with several other documents from the Foundation archives. This page was recovered through unknown means by Dr. Montauk. No other materials from these data losses have been found. Summary. The documents are lost and extremely extensive, covering a wide range of data concerning the Foundation's early history. In particular, several documents related to SCP-001 have gone missing. However, my investigations have provided me with a great deal of information, and I believe that I can say with some certainty that the historical record as stated in Scranton's comprehensive history remains broadly intact, albeit with some modifications I will detail below. Scranton's work states that the Foundation was founded in 1824 by the merger of 13 worldwide organizations with a particular interest in preventing awareness of anomalous activities. The most prominent of these were the Foundation of the Secure Containment of the Unnatural, the Devon Edge Aduya, the United Sites of the Department of Unexplained Affairs, the Council of Five Overseers, and the Committee of Paranormal Ethics. 
Scranton goes on to tell us that this was done in response to the threat posed by SCP-001, and that the early Foundation had an extensive role to play in that anomaly's containment. However, the documents I have before me present a rather different picture. It appears that the Foundation was not founded in response to SCP-001 at all. Indeed, I cannot find any references to the present SCP-001 prior to 1826. It appears to have been a highly publicized attack by SCP-173 in New York which was the initial impetus for the Foundation's formation. SCP-173's still unresolved containment breach in 1854 is, I believe, the reason for the alteration of the record. Scranton's embarrassment at… Document 6. The following is a table compiled by Dr. Montauk. It shows a series of votes passed by the O5 Council correlated with incidents potentially or certainly involving SCP-001. Date of vote. July 9th, 1884. Description of vote. Vote to officially standardize documentation across the SCP Foundation. Passed 13 to 0. Related SCP-001 incident. A series of hymns devoted to SCP-001 heard outside Site 1. Date of vote. February 1st, 1857. Description of vote. Vote to standardize containment procedures for SCP-001. Passed 12 to 1. Related SCP-001 incident. All members of the O5 Council reported dreaming of an unidentified man of South Asian origin weeping. Date of vote. November 9th, 1895. Description of vote. Vote on the termination of Agent de Beauvoir. Passed 6 to 5. Two abstentions. Related SCP-001 incident. A large quantity of blood-stained sheets of paper with the words SCP-001, written in blood over each sheet, spontaneously manifested in the bedrooms of all members of the O5 Council. The blood was later identified to belong to both Agent de Beauvoir and an unknown species of poultry. Date of Vote October 10th, 1902 Description of Vote Vote on the implementation of the site system. Passed 10 to 2. One abstention. Related SCP-001 incident. A location in North America saw sudden and unexplained wildfires. Residents reported seeing dragons made of fire and a horned crown appear in the night sky above the area. The wildfires were found in 2007 to have begun at the location of the future Site-19. Date of vote, January 23rd, 1922. Description of vote. Vote on the containment procedures for SCP-2317. Best 4-3. Six abstentions. Related SCP-001 incident. Several cracks appeared in the earth near containment area 179. Red smoke was seen pouring out of each crack for seven minutes before the cracks abruptly closed. Date of vote. February 8th, 2011. Description of vote. Vote to unify the project purviews of SCP-001, SCP-231, and SCP-2317. Passed 10 to 2, one abstention. Related SCP-001 incident. A series of hymns devoted to SCP-001 heard outside Site 1, interspersed with the sound of laughter. Date of vote. March 31st, 2018. Description of vote. Vote on the object class reclassification of SCP-2317, passed 9-4. Related SCP-001 incident. Several interdimensional rifts open outside containment area 179. These rifts alternated between opening on Universe Kappa Arrakesh and opening into an unknown dimension. This unknown dimension is characterized by the presence of a large quantity of red smoke and an unknown number of human voices screaming from within. Document 7. The following is an extract from the 1972 political work, Manifesto for Old Order, by the children of the Scarlet King member Ariadne Cartwright. Cartwright's work is only found in unpublished copies among anomalous circles and groups related to SCP-001. Fragments such as this were recovered by Dr. Montauk during the course of his investigation. The sin of modernity is vital to understand. It is not that we glorify the pre-modern. The suffering was very real and very extant. We must not fall into the trap of seeing the past as a series of beautiful Arcadias, full of dancing around maypoles and shepherds living in pleasant anarchy. The past was brutal, but it was also real. It wasn't really the pre-modern, too. That is merely how historians have characterized it. They are wedded to their theory of modernization, and can conceive of no alternate mode of development other than a singular drive towards the contemporary West, with other modes of living seen as being stuck in some imagined earlier place on a timeline. It's all nonsense. The people of the past were capable of seeing the world as it really is. Those of us who have joined the King's forces can all see this truth, that there is something very, very wrong with the world in which we live. Our buildings are made of calcifying, peeling concrete as we shamble, each day two jobs and lives created solely for the purpose of maintaining their own system. But there is no other way to live. 
Socialism, anarchism, syndicalism, these are little more than constructed pipe dreams. The frail thoughts of lesser men trying to impose their antiquated prejudices on the world around them. There's only one alternative way to live. To cast down the law of concrete is to raise up the law of blood. We must learn what it is to die, to be enslaved, truly, brutally enslaved, with no compassion or compunction from our masters. We must learn what it is to be taken towards a single purpose, to know and truly understand our lack of agency. We must be beholden to a world of gods and darkness, the tempest-tossed refuse of a race of fools. We must kill modernity, post-modernity, with all its analysis and sneering observation. There is only one rule, the rule of chaos, for humanity, for life, for the Scarlet King.